Hello again. As promised via my channel, I am doing a full collection of my PS3 games and one Wii game and my Blu-rays. So, introduction over. I'm just got a hammer. First game and only Wii game, Final Fantasy. Crystal Chronicle, The Crystal Bearers. My mother bought me this for my Christmas. And I'm, I'm virtually, well, I'm, yeah, I'm really glad she did because I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan and I always wanted this the minute I seen it at E3 2006, I think. Yeah, it was worth getting. It's not worth getting, however, if you're not a Final Fantasy fan because if you're not a Final Fantasy fan and you're just playing it because it's a Wii game, it's shit. <laughs> but apart from that, yeah, it's good. Very good. Um, the next three, it's just going to be three at the same time because these are the games that I've already reviewed. And I've already made videos for them, so if you haven't watched them then, please do find out what I think about them. In a very shit manner, I may put out, I will make better videos. Next! The Prince of Persia HD Trilogy, absolute must buy for any fan of Prince of Persia. Even if you've never played the original three and you just like the 2008 remake or reboot, if I don't know how to say it, of Prince of Persia, you know, the cell shaded one that no one likes. But yeah, this is a must buy for anyone and everyone. It is absolutely top draw. And usually when I see games saying, oh, it's been remastered in HD, like the PS2 games and PS1 games has been remastered in HD in a full 60 frames per second, I usually grimace at that. But having just played The Sands of Time, because I want a platinum it, it's absolutely stunning for a PS2 game remastered in HD. It's absolutely stunning. An absolute must buy. Good game. Next. And a, a total favourite of mine, Killzone 2. If you're a PS3 fan, you enjoyed Killzone 1, or in general you just love meaty, gritty, full-blooded shooters, then this is, this is the complete package for you. I would say beforehand that the control system is absolutely terrible. It is the worst control system I've ever seen on a first-person game. Not because it doesn't work, it's because of where the buttons are placed on the controller. So basically it's easily sorted, just go into options, flick through the custom settings and blah, that's you. Easy. Easy as peas. Very worth buying, one of the best games for the PS3 ever. Next, and I'm sure everyone will agree, an absolute fantastic game, Assassin's Creed 2, the game of the year edition. Because I can't be bothered going on to the store and buying and downloading and installing expansions, DLC, whatever. Because I'm lazy. But this is absolutely top draw. It is just unbelievably good. I have played Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I'm still not too sure about getting it for the story. I'm just getting it purely for the online leaderboard, not online specifically, just the online leaderboards, e.g. kill streaks, hidden blade kill streaks and all weapon kill streaks, because that's just a barrel of laughs. But this is just great. It is Assassin's Creed 1 times 10. It's like a 10 Assassin's Creed 1s put together and you get Assassin's Creed 2, which is fantastic. It is sublime. Anyone who doesn't have this needs to buy it, even if you didn't like Assassin's Creed 1. You will fall in love with Assassin's Creed 2. Next, Prince of Persia. The 2008 Cell Shaded Prince of Persia. New character, new princess, it's all good. I love this game. It is one of my favourite games of all time, I think it is. And it's one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen in my life. Um, I know a lot of people that absolutely hate this game. They hate how the fighting is, they hate how you can't die, which for me isn't that much of a problem because who wants to die unless you're an emo? I think the graphics are absolutely revolutionary and, you know, shows the promise of cel shade 
shaded graphics, it's absolutely stunning. And I think it's just so easy and streamlined to play. Because back in the day with the Sands of Time, I would always be like, right, planning through my wall run and my jumps so I didn't have to die and rewind time because it's so hot, gut wrenching and it's so tense. But that's also an, a good thing about it. But with this, you can just run, jump, run along walls, climb walls, climb along the roofs of the walls, which is weird, slide down them and not be worried about dying. You can, it's basically, it makes you feel fearless. Fantastic game. Buy it if you love the original Prince of Persia and buy it if you just want to try something different. It's fantastic. Next, I'm basically doing two games here because one of them isn't here. Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2, among thieves. Uncharted 1 Drake's Fortune, absolutely sublime. That's at my friend Stephen's house because I, I loaned it to him. Uncharted 2 among thieves, ah, uh, sadly, I haven't actually played it yet. I bought it about four weeks ago but I ended up getting six other games and I, I just can't find the time or the energy to just slap this in. But I know and have seen enough of it to know it is one of the best games I'll ever play in my entire life. Worth a buy, worth a shout. Um, can't wait for Uncharted 3 because I've seen the gameplay video and it is it just looked one of the greatest games that will ever be made, ever, ever, ever. And it's a PS3 exclusive. Brilliant. Next up, um, bit of a mixed bag here. Dragon Age Origins, the Collector's Edition. Because I'm such an RPG whore, and there hadn't been an RPG for the PS3 in a long time. When this got announced, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And when I first got it, I couldn't stop playing it. It was so good. After completing it once, it's just really, really boring and really, really slow. Worth a buy. Worth a buy for RPG horrors, and it's worth a buy if you want a long game, a deep RPG. And I mean, it's from Bioware, so you know what you're going to expect. Any, any anybody that's a fan of Mass Effect, you know what you're going to get. Dragon Age Two. Can't wait for that to come out. It's going to be amazing. Next, Pro Evolution Soccer 2011. Wow, wow! I can't believe this. This doesn't get the praise it deserves. And FIFA fucking eleven. It's like, oh, it's the best football game out there. Is it? Fuck! I played FIFA eleven and I absolutely fucking hated it. This is fantastic. This game is fantastic. The Ed. What I love about PES 11, that I hated about PES 9 and PES 10, is that the editing, the editing is huge again. Thank God, Konami, you finally realised how much your retards have been. Thank God that the, the editing has just exploded and it's so huge. Stadium Creator, I was so excited for that because I love building my own stadiums. Thank you, early May Manager 2007. But it's shit in this. It's absolutely terrible. I hope, and but, but I, 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 I'm not at bother because it's, it's Konami's first try. I just hope that in PES 2010, twi 2010? Uh, PES 2012, that Stadium Creator is, is expanded on and made better. Because it's shit in this, you can't even do anything. And <laughs> you read the back and you read inside and when you're playing it, all you hear is freedom. <laughs> And that's purely what this game is. Everything you do is about freedom of play. Everything is free. There's no there's no set path anywhere. You can go, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. It's fantastic. Easily the best football game I've ever played in my life. It's worth a buy, worth a shout, and it's genius. And I don't care about how it doesn't have licensed teams because you can just edit them, that's the best thing about PES. Next, The Legend of Spyro, Dawn of the Dragon. I absolutely love Spyro. Um, it's a huge part of my childhood because when I was younger with the PS1, God bless it, so uh, I, my life was devoted to Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. Crash Bandicoot's on the PlayStation Store, so no worries there. Spyro. 
It's on the PS race, and it's not on the PS PlayStation Store, which is a mistake. But yeah, fantastic if you're a Spyro fan. If you're not a Spyro fan, it is absolutely shit. But if you're a Spyro fan, it's, it's just amazing. It's really good. Graphically, I think it's really good. For a Spyro game, I think it's really good. Wait. It's really good. If you're a Spyro fan. If you're not a Spyro fan, please, I implore you, do not buy this game. Next. Resistance 2. Da -da. PS3 exclusive. Such a big game. Well, come out in 2008. Yeah. Massive, huge game. Now it's a puny little insect, minuscule little game. Online's really fun, but minuscule in the entertainment compared to others. Still brilliant to play though. Can't wait until Resistance 3 comes out because that just looks amazing. Graphically. Graphically this is shit. And Resistance 3 just looks to looks like it's gonna blow everyone's mind. This is worth a buy. Um, I wouldn't recommend anyone starting off the Resistance series on Resistance Fall of Man because that's just terrible. Well, nowadays it's terrible and uh, the story in one doesn't really affect two or three in any way whatsoever. Except from the main character, but even then, even then it just doesn't help. Next, um, one of the best games I've ever played in my life and... One of my favourite games of all time. Heavy Rain. Oh, wow. What a game. What an actual game. This is one of the few few modern day original games that actually lives up to its hype. This game was everything that David Cage and Quantic Dream promised it would be. It was, it's a tense thriller and with an amazing, amazing, ever, ever changing and ever winding story. I've completed it three times currently and every single time has brought something different and each character is, are, is a piece of genius, piece of motion capture genius and the acting is top draw. I don't know where they found these people or why they've never been brought up before but they are brilliant. Even the minor characters are great at their acting. This game, if you're going to buy any game, buy this game. It's well worth it. And don't get it with Move. PlayStation Move's a piece of shit. Sorry to say, but it is. Next. Fallout 3. Game of the Year edition. <sighs> Fallout with me. When back in the day I thought Fallout was easily probably the best game ever. But now... I find it really boring and incredibly, incredibly deep with faults. Ah, it's, it's really, it's really bad now. Cause the, cause the, the graphical hitches and the, and the gameplay lagging and tearings and crashings and oh god, all the faults that the game has. It's just a bit much now, especially playing what I'm on my out of five DLCs, I'm on my third point look at it and it's just too much now. I don't know how I managed to get through Anchorage with the amount of lag and shit that that brought, but Jesus Christ. Zeta was too hard, Anchorage was too laggy, and point lookout's just really, really, it's just, it's just boring. I just can't, I just can't get into Fallout anymore. Ugh. It's really disappointing because I used to play this game every single day, all day. I've got two save files on this that are easily, that are both 60 odd hours long. So that's 120 hours easy that I've spent on this game. And it's just, I just can't be bothered anymore. But still, if you haven't experienced it, you must experience it. Because once you go fallout, you never go back. <laughs> 